Hi there! Welcome to the Gardens and Graveyards channel. My name is Charisma and today we're hanging out in the studio and we're going to do a plant craft. So I don't know if you've ever seen one of those concrete planter heads in a nursery or a garden center, but I will pop one up on the screen right here to just give you an example. I've been eyeing them for a little while. I'm always kind of picky with my faces. Um, I have a lot of fairies and I'm always like, oh, the face just doesn't really speak to me. So, um, you know, I'm always kind of like filling out the face. So I haven't found a whole lot that I just really love the face of. And the ones that I have found that I do like are really crazy expensive. So for a Basically, most of them fit like a four to six inch container if you were to put a pot inside there. And they're all $100 and above. I don't know that I'm going to love having a face randomly in my garden. I'm one of those people that like the, you know, at Christmas time when people just do like Santa heads, they kind of freak me out like shrunken head situations <laughs> so I want to kind of feel it out I love the idea and I've seen some really beautiful um, and creative ways to use the um, to use the concrete heads but I'm not completely convinced I want one in my garden so, <laughs> so I picked up I've had this idea for a little while and I've been just kind of waiting to have the right um, circumstances come my way. And I was at a thrift store and I found these doll heads. Um, I found three of them for under $10. I think it was closer to like six or $7. I have one more besides these two, obviously three, um, that I wanna do something else with. I wanna paint her face, so that'll be a little bit longer, um, a longer project. But uh, today, I think we can get these done. So I started with this um, character from Frozen, and I removed her hair, and it just looks like this in the back. And I'm gonna leave her face exactly as it is, and I'm gonna plant her up with a um, with cuttings of a tr triscanthia, a purple tricolored triscanthia. Um, and then with the Barbie head, you know, these are those like fix your hair Barbie. I don't know who, what they're called, but um, I'm going to remove her hair. And I wanted to show you, so like this one was $1.99. Um, so I wanted to show you how I did that, but I wanted to practice on her first. So we are going to take her hair off and then... I'm going to with this with this doll head. I'm going to then create a sort of a headdress with um, sequins to create sort of a beautiful bulky headdress, and then um, we're going to paint the entire thing with this Rust-Oleum stone texture finish, so it looks like a concrete head. Right. All right. So let's get started. This might be a two part project. Um, I might just get her all glued and painted and wait for her to dry this evening. And then tomorrow we could plant her up. We'll see how far we get. Okay. So all that I needed to take the hair off of this doll was a box cutter with a new blade. So this blade is brand new, except that I used it to cut off her hair. So we're going to go ahead and do that with this one. I do think it would be easier to do if I pull all of her hair up. So she came with these little rubber bands in her hair. Take those out and use it to create a ponytail. Right, and do 
obviously it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just want to be able to see. I'll be able to see what I'm doing here. All right. All right, so I'm just starting. All right, so then I can just throw away her hair and have a little bit of cleanup here to do so I could just shave that a little bit. Then, in the back here, I guess I could take off this sticker. <laughs> then back here, I didn't go around the bottom part of her hair because what I discovered on this one is that it's just really low and it doesn't give a whole lot of option to plant as deeply. So I know that I'm gonna cover this up with, um, with sequins. So I'm just gonna try to maybe cut it really short. That's pretty good. It certainly doesn't have to be perfect, especially since most of it's going to be covered up. So, right, so let's put these things away. And we'll plug in my hot glue gun. All right, so then I've got all of these sequins that I don't use for anything at all. I just, they came with a kit that I had and it just is what it is. So um, I don't want to worry about color because it's all going to get painted. What I want to think about is scale. So I'm going to um, so if I put something this big on her, that might be a little too large. So I'm looking at something more along this size to create sort of a headdress. So I've got a bunch of different sizes. I kind of want to just pull a bunch out here and one, two, 
shapes. So then I thought I would just sort of play with some ideas. Right, then I did a cluster to make sort of a flower there. Okay, so I think I'm happy with how that looks. It's pretty awesome. So I think she is done with her headdress. I'm not too worried about if the glue has dulled any of the sequins because it's all going to be painted. I do have a little bit of zhuzh I want to add to this figurine, I'm going to give her a little bit of seashell bangs. So I had a, I did a jellyfish planting project recently. I'll link that down below. Um, but one of my sea urchins um, broke apart. So I thought it would be really cute to just add <laughs> add these on her like bangs I just think it's sweet oh unless I'm breaking all of it obviously I have to glue them or they aren't going to stay so I'm gonna do that real quick All right, now she has some seashell bangs. I think that's adorable. Okay, she's adorable. Let me clean up these so I don't lose all the little pieces. And oh, here, see this is kind of what the jellyfish, or the jellyfish, this is a sea urchin. And it just broke in quadrants. And that's what gave me that gave me her bangs all right I'm gonna clean up this little bit of mess and then we can spray paint her
Okay, so all I'm going to do is get this shaken up and spray her. All right, so I'm going to let her dry for a bit, and if she gets totally dry and, you know, I'm, we'll do a couple of layers until she's fully, fully done. You could see it's going to take a few layers. You can still see a lot of plastic through there, so it'll, it'll take probably at least one more, but I'm thinking more like two or three more um, layers. We'll see what happens once it's dry. Um, and then we'll get her planted up. So if I don't get her totally dry this evening before it's time to make dinner, um, I pretty much, I'm pretty much done filming once it's time to make dinner. So, um, if I don't get it all done this evening, we'll get her potted up in the morning. We'll for sure get the spray paint done. I just might not, um, move into the next part of the project until the morning. So let's see how long she takes to dry. I'll let you know how long it takes and how many coats it takes. And then we'll get moving into the next section of the project, which is planting her up with succulents. Okay, so it's been more than a few days. It's been more like a week and uh, you know, life just got in the way. But it ended up taking three coats of the stone spray paint to get her done. And um, I didn't worry about the underneath or the inside as much as I did everywhere. She's gonna be visible. Um, it did take about six hours per drying time, um, even with the heater on. Maybe because it was too thick, maybe because it's plastic. I'm not really sure, but she's all dry and ready to go now. So all that I'm going to do is she has like a little screw that holds her head in place and it does seep a little bit of water. So I'm not worried about a drainage hole in this pot. Um, and then I'm going to use this succulent and cactus potting mix. All right, so this uh, faux concrete planter is going to go outside. So I have four different kinds of sedum here that can go outside in a zone 9A without any problems at all. 
so my hope is that there's enough contrast and difference between all of them and texture that will allow me to just create a fun, abundant headdress for her. I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see the one side of her um, head. The headdress is taller than the other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the bottom and just mound my soil on top of each sedum as I go along. So real quick, we have hens and chicks. Hens and chicks. <laughs> and hens, red beauty, hens and chicks. So two of these don't have names and one does. And then this is a island of Sakhalin sedum. The beauty of um, the succulents and sedums, these are, um, these three are sempervirin and then this one is a sedum. And the beauty of these is they're totally drought tolerant and you can pull them off and let them each one of these little guys becomes a plant of her own. I would like to sort of have a draping effect over her crown. So we're just gonna start with one and start pulling it apart. If I was putting this in the ground, I could put it in whole just like this. But because I'm using it for a headdress, I'm gonna remove as much of the soil as I can from her roots. So these are all babies. I actually really love this for the majority of her hair. So I think I'm actually just gonna put all of this right in the middle. And then just tuck in I'm gonna let those drape over a little bit and then I'm just gonna take this one off you see me just pulled that off of there to take off all the little lower bottom uh, petals So if I just mound up the soil like this, be careful not to get soil in. I don't really want too much soil inside of the crown of the plants. Just trying to be careful about that. Now, got that kind of mounted up there. She feels pretty secure back there. And we'll just keep moving forward.
right, I'm pretty happy with that. I think it looks great. Still have a little bit of sedums left for other projects. She's so cute. Okay, there she is. Isn't she so cute? I love it. She looks absolutely fantastic. And it's gonna go great in the garden. Okay, so then with this one, we are going to use, I was thinking I would use these Transcanthia cuttings and I think that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this in here with soil and then I can dress up around the edges. Potting soil, and all we have to do with these transcanthia is cut them, leave a stem, pop them in the soil. Not that much of a stem. <clears throat> and the idea is I want it to be hair, so I do want some trailing. Okay, so after a little bit of uh, arrangement, I added this succulent that can take a little tiny bit more water than normal succulents, but the Triscanthia likes to dry out, so I'm confident that that'll be fine. And then I actually needed a little bit more of the Triscanthia, so I took some more cuttings off of the mother plant. My hope is we can set her in here and I have to do a little ranging. Oops. Let's see from this side. She looks like. Um, stabilize how she's sitting in there. Just trying to make it even in there. So it sits on there. Like that. Bit of, just gonna roll this up like this and wrap it around here. Create stabilization. Oops, it's okay. I'll just try to stabilize her in there. Pretty good. Put this back in there. Oops.
Okay. All right, then I can add some moss here. Just a little bit. Back. Okay. She turned out pretty cute. It's got a little, lots of texture and fun. And I love the purple Triscanthia with her little purple outfit. So adorable. So there we go. Now we have the two head planters. All done. Let's see. Make sure that you can see it really well. Can you see those? They look so cute. I am thrilled with them. <laughs> All right, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you were inspired to do something fun and creative. If you have a project that you've been putting off or you've had in your mind for a while, I hope this motivates you to, to get out there and do it for yourself. Because once you do, you'll be so happy that it's done and I bet that it turns out just as good or better than you ever imagined. Until the next time, keep celebrating your life and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.